Voting in this last decade has been pathetically low. It has been dropping for the past century. People are disillusioned by it and see it as a waste of time or giving legitimacy to a system that does not work and never brings anything good. The anti-statists are a big proponent of not voting from what I've found on here. They believe that if everyone stopped voting, then the government would have no legitimacy and it could be easily overthrown and the world would sort itself out through anarcho-capitalism, which is one of the most laughable ideas in the international market. Any anti-statist system would require insanely careful planning with a population educated enough to think for themselves and the rich having no major advantages over anyone else, meaning we would have to have complete socialism or even communism prior to installing anarchy. The problem is that probably around the time of the baby boomers, a certain concept which our very nation was built on was no longer considered a value. It is what allowed the states to come together to break away from England. It is what allowed them to sit down and pen and ratify a constitution. It is what allowed Lincoln and FDR to do what they needed to do. Its antithesis causes stagnation and damage to the people and the economy. This value, of course, is compromise. I found it funny that so many people claim that whatever they say is, is what the Founding Fathers meant. They seem to have the ideal that the Founding Fathers agreed on everything and never gave an inch against anything that they disagreed with. Their ideal is closer to the robot chicken sketch 1776 than reality. Read the Constitution. Compromise was the only thing that got this nation off the ground. Anyone who knows anything about U.S. history knows that the Founding Fathers disagreed on more things than they agreed on. Many wanted a king. Some wanted to make this a religious nation. Northern and southern states had to compromise on slavery and even allowed a slave owner to get three-fifths of an extra vote for each slave he owned to keep them enslaved. If the Founding Fathers can compromise on slavery, I think we can compromise on health care. These people are politicians. They nitpick the Constitution apart to ensure that the meanings weren't vague down to the letter of whether to capitalize a letter or not. However, without this compromise, we might still be under the monarchy of England with no other form of government tried. When it comes to the point of constitutionalists like Ron Paul, he tells people that the Constitution does not give the government the power to tax or control commerce and we should just all follow the Constitution. Well, it does say we can be taxed by the federal government. The 14th Amendment broadly gives Congress whatever means necessary to protect people from being treated unfairly by their states. This requires federal taxes or the law is hollow and meaningless. The ability to control issues in business, including regulation, occurs in the Interstate Commerce Clause penned by that evil fascist dictator, James Madison. John Adams was a Federalist and a strong proponent of a centralized government and was very key in getting the Declaration of Independence signed. Thomas Paine was all for the idea of welfare for the poor. Self-claimed constitutionalists are much like Christians. They only read the parts they like and try to rationalize why the parts that go against their thinking isn't really what the great and perfect founders meant. If you believe that less government is best, that's fine, but don't try to spin the founders as being your prophets to back you up. Most of them will not in their actual writings unless you take them out of context. The idea of voting is a fairly novel one on the wide scale that it was used in the U.S., Prior to that, there were elections in small countries or city-states like Greece and Rome, but nothing on a nationwide scale. Voting is when you get a tiny say using compromise out of a group of a bunch of other people. It's kind of crappy, really, but it's better than no say at all. Democracy is the worst form of government, except all the others that have been tried. Winston Churchill. Because your voice is so small in a sea of so many, it really feels like you have no voice at all. Especially when you have to compromise any time you go to the poll because you may only agree with one half of what the person you're voting for agrees with or just be voting against the other guy. This is a compromise, sadly. As much as I support voting, I will be one of the first people to say that we seriously need voter reform. Obama promised voter reform, but unfortunately the economy and the Republicans got in the way of much progress in that area. If Obama hopes to win in 2012, he had better make it a major priority. Firstly, I would remove the rights of corporations to have the same rights as individuals. Corporation is a near-immortal non-being that has no conscience and the appearance of legitimacy. A corporation also has the money to spend on psychological manipulation via PR persons. Sadly, since the Supreme Court considers them people, it may take an amendment to get that kind of voter law through. 
Next thing I would do is to only allow government funded campaigns and to cap the amount of money spent on the elections. Voter cynicism stems from the fact that it seems like only those with money have been bought by the rich and can get elected, and sadly they are more than often right. Nextly, I would put the term limits on all seats, as incumbents tend to retain their seats ridiculously easy unless there is a big swell of anger or a mass amount of money spent to unseat the person. And Washington was a big proponent of new ideas and new blood and power as he stepped down after just two terms. To reduce voter frustration, I would probably also implement some European voting ideas, such as national voting holiday. The idea of just one election for all parties instead of a primary, then a runoff for two highest winners to allow the small parties to actually have a chance of winning. The idea of ranking of candidates appeals to me a lot. Also something that would be nice to do like Britain does would be to only allow one month to campaign. These are ideas I would love to see perfect and uncorrupt our democracy. Unfortunately, it will be very slow to come. In the meantime, I am still going to vote. To ensure that everyone has a say, through the power of compromise, I will be voting. And because the Democrats have done nothing but bent over backwards and sometimes forwards to try and reach a compromise with the Republicans, I will be voting for Democrats. Even if you disagree with me, go vote. Because if you don't vote, you have no right to bitch about the government. And in a nation of 300 million people, compromise is the only way anything is going to get done.